Reddit is so incredibly easy to manipulate and control. The way Reddit works, for those that don't know, is you upvote and downvote something. So if you create a bunch of different accounts using proxy servers, you can make sure your post is always in front. And then I noticed that the majority of Reddit seems to hate women. And then I noticed that the majority of Reddit also seems to hate men. I think Reddit just hates everyone. This is the one and only Aaron Swartz. Ever since he was a young boy, he radiated ambition. His curiosity was endless. And at the age of three, he learned to read on his own. It's called My Family Faker. Then, when he discovered the world of computers, he fell in love. How can it help? Mommy, why is nothing working? He started programming and by the age of 14, became part of the committee that developed RSS. Um, RSS was a tool that you can use to get summaries of things that are going on in other web pages. Soon after, he founded a successful software company called Infogami and, oh yeah, was the co-owner of Reddit. But what made Aaron so unique was not his gift of programming. It was that in the midst of working in a corporate culture, he stood up for what was right, even when everyone was against him. He fought against government control because he believed that online information should be accessible to everyone without having to pay a penny. But of course, fighting the government never ends well. In 2011, Swartz was arrested by MIT's police and charged with wire fraud for a maximum penalty of $1 million and 35 years in prison. But he wouldn't end up serving time because, in the end, he passed away by his own hand. But before leaving this earth, he made sure to warn us about the dangers of online censorship. Reddit used to be a place where people could talk about anything and everything. In this documentary, I'm going to go over the tragic events that happened to Reddit. And stay till the end because you'll figure out just how you play a role in this too. In the late 90s and early 2000s, forums were the norm. It was the way people interacted and got information about hobbies they loved. Nowadays, forums are mostly extinct. And while Facebook is the most popular social media platform today, it doesn't bring in a strong sense of community the way old forums did. So they crumbled. But there was one that stood strong, Reddit. From the early days, Reddit advertised itself as the front page of the internet the forum of all forums, and for many, a symbol of free speech. At least, at first. Reddit was started by these two college roommates, Alexis Ohanian and Steve Huffman. They wanted to do good for the world. I remember one of my profs asking why we wanted to be here, and I simply said that I wanted to make the world suck less. In 2005, they attempted to create a way to order food right from your mobile phone. I used to sit there while I pumped gas thinking, this is a total waste of time because I'm just standing here. The sub guy inside, he's just standing there. If only there was a way for me to communicate to him, like he could be making my sub right now. This idea was rejected, but they didn't stop there. After weeks of long days and long nights, they finally launched Reddit. In the beginning, they both created fake profiles and uploaded the content themselves to keep the site active. Alexis and I started submitting all the content just to keep the thing full, right? Because Reddit's no fun if the page is blank. And as the site grew, people felt free to talk about anything and everything. And there seemed to be no judgment, which is what attracted people in the first place. Even Yishan Wong, Reddit's CEO in 2011, explained that it wasn't Reddit's place to enforce moral actions. He said, quote, you choose what to post. You choose what kind of subreddit to create and what kind of rules you will enforce. We will not try to interfere, not because we don't care, but because we care that you make your choices between right and wrong. We all need a community where we can ask our silliest questions and share our darkest confessions. And with a single website, Reddit delivered it all. Reddit was growing because it was perfect. 
But of course, with growth comes problems. One of the first incidents of Reddit banning something on their site was during an event known as the Fappening. From Jennifer Lawrence to Kate Upton, it is what could be the largest breach of private racy celebrity photos in history. In 2014, naked photos of Jennifer Lawrence and Kate Upton were leaked and uploaded on Reddit. Within minutes, it was on the front page of r slash all. And two hours later, other explicit photos, including Vanessa Hudgens, were leaked too. Reports say that a hacker hacked Apple's iCloud to get access to these private photos. A week later, r slash the fappening was banned, which marked the first signs of Reddit taking control of their site. And don't get me wrong, I absolutely agree that subreddits sharing illegal private photos should be shut down. But nevertheless, this opened the stage for Reddit to take even more control. Soon, Reddit rolled out new anti-harassment guidelines. But there was one problem. Who decides what's allowed to be posted? China's President Xi Jinping recently issued tighter rules for online news portals and network providers. So if you're connected online in China, there's really no way of telling just how vast your experience is being filtered. It is an unlikely source of funding for a website that prides itself on free speech. If someone asked you to name the largest video game publisher, what would you guess? Microsoft? Sony? Nintendo? What about EA? All wrong. The answer is by far a Chinese tech company called Tencent. Not only is it China's biggest social network, but it's the largest gaming company in the world. And in 2019, Tencent invested $150 million into Reddit. So what's the problem? Well, Tencent isn't exactly the most trustworthy company. Tencent's WeChat platform has been accused of blocking TikTok videos and censoring politically sensitive content. Another questionable action happened when mobile gaming started gaining traction. Tencent talked with Riot Games about turning League of Legends into a mobile game. Riot declined, explaining that the game's experience couldn't be replicated on smartphones. So what did Tencent do? They created their own game called Honor of Kings, which was a literal ripoff of League. They stole Riot's intellectual property, and when Riot brought it up, they changed the game just enough so they wouldn't get in trouble. And by the end of 2017, Honor of Kings became the most popular smartphone game in China. So companies rip off games all the time. That's nothing new. But the difference here was that Tencent is the parent company of Riot Games, which means they went against the very company they were supposed to be supporting. While some users took this news of Tencent investing in Reddit very seriously, some also made fun of the situation by posting memes featuring Winnie the Pooh, since this innocent cartoon character is banned in China. Chinese censors began to remove comparisons of Winnie the Pooh and Xi Jinping from the Chinese internet. If something as innocent as a cartoon bear who eats honey can be censored by the Chinese government, then I don't know if Reddit's safe from this authoritarianism. There was a theory that was covered by a YouTuber named The Internet Investigator. The theory suspected that Tencent was actually removing comments on Reddit. This picture was posted on the Wholesome Memes subreddit, just a normal meme. But when you take a look at the comments, you'll see that 718 comments have been removed by moderators. It's clear that a human didn't go through all these comments by hand. But here's when things get interesting. All the comments were removed except for the ones with the word Tencent in them. This theory states that the bot was supposed to remove all comments with the word Tencent, but glitched and removed everything else instead. Because of Tencent's deal with Reddit, users were mocking Tencent by creating memes. And it seems logical that Tencent didn't want that happening. We may never know if Tencent really has enough stake in the company to influence censorship on Reddit. But you can make your own conclusion. 
But this isn't where Reddit's dark relationship with censorship ends. It's actually just the beginning. We believe free expression is very, very important. And people being authentic is very important. And Reddit, as a reflection of humanity, is a cool and valuable artifact of what's going on in the world. In 2016, Donald Trump's election became a red-hot topic over the internet, and Reddit was no exception. In fact, I think one of the biggest battlegrounds for political discussion was on Reddit. But was it a fair discussion? Well, around election time, Reddit CEO Steve Huffman admitted to editing user comments that criticized him. He changed references to his own Reddit username Spez and replaced them with the names of moderators from the subreddit r slash the Donald. After being called out by the users of the subreddit, he said that he was inspired to edit the comments after a flood of insults were being thrown at him. Huffman quoted, I messed with the F Spez comments, replacing Spez with the Donald mods for about an hour. While I'm sure this didn't make a dent in the election, it's kind of concerning that a CEO with enormous power would be swept away with emotion over some insults. He ended up apologizing, but here's my question to you. How can you trust that you're engaging in a free conversation when the CEO himself edits comments that he doesn't like? On top of that, Reddit's new policies have caused thousands of subreddits to be banned like never before. In 2020, around 7,000 subreddits were deleted due to hateful speech, affecting over 365,000 daily users. In fact, Reddit deleted 6% of posts made in 2020, which for such a huge platform means 233 million posts were removed. And let's not underestimate Reddit's influence here. According to Statista, as of November 2021, Reddit is the 11th most popular website in the world. This whole situation is sad because this is the very thing that Aaron Swartz fought for and eventually died for. So far, we've talked about how Reddit as a company has possibly censored its users. But how does this affect you? Forget a bitter CEO deleting comments. Reddit has a bigger weapon. About a month ago, I was finally brave enough to become a Reddit moderator. I'm one of the most powerful people to ever live. I'm a mod, I have power, I'm in control. I banned 40 people today just because they pissed me off. You're banned. You can no longer post on wholesome puppers. If I want to dismantle you and your career, I will. In early 2021, Reddit user Lobo Locos commented on the subreddit r slash food on a post about a chicken burger. He considered this burger to be a sandwich instead and simply left the comment, chicken sandwich. Then all hell broke loose. 10 minutes later, he was banned for 30 days for shaming the original poster. He talked to the moderator and the mod explained, Correcting someone in public is public shaming. The US calls it one thing and other countries call it a burger. Lobo Locos tried to apologize, but the mod replied, if you're looking to appeal your ban, I would suggest self-reflection on the situation and educate yourself on the whole public shaming thing. I'll spare you the details, but long story short, Lobo Locos ended with saying, just confused on how saying two words like chicken sandwich could lead to a ban. And almost instantly, the moderator permanently banned him. If this story sounds extreme, it's because it is. And this is just one of the many stories I was able to find online about Reddit mods censoring people they don't agree with. And we could only wish that it was always about silly topics like chicken. Then, you have another species of moderators called Reddit power mods. These type of moderators can control an absurd amount of subreddits. Let me give you an idea of just how much power they have. 92 out of the 500 most famous subreddits are moderated by just four people. 
Okay, imagine this. You're hanging out with your friends. They start talking about a topic you don't agree with. So you state an opposing opinion. You all converse about the topic, and in most cases, it doesn't really matter who believes what. You all still are friends. Now imagine disagreeing with a Reddit power mod. You can't. Because if you do, you'll be banished from the friend group forever. This is Sparta! One of the most hated power mods is a person that goes by the name Awkward the Turtle, who's in charge of not 10, not even 100 subreddits. He's in charge of 1,000 subreddits, and there are some sources that say the number is actually 2,572. That kind of power is wild. On the subreddit Mildly Infuriating, Awkward the Turtle commented, This is why men shouldn't be allowed to be in charge of anything. Then pinned his comment to get a lot of eyes on it. If you don't know what it means to pin a comment, just know that he used his moderator abilities to make himself more famous. It's also pretty clear that he doesn't care about others. A person asked him, why do you treat modding like this? He replied, the pay isn't good enough otherwise. He also calls Redditors bad names and once called a fellow moderator an incel. These are people that can censor you anytime if they wish to. Power mods have been controversial for years and yet nothing gets done to keep so few people from having a large influence on a platform like Reddit. The kicker is that these people don't get paid for what they do, yet invest a lot of time and energy managing posts, comments, and discussions. So the question is, why? Well, some say that mods just crave control, perhaps not having any in their real lives. But there might be another reason too. Power mod Galloboob has been known to subtly promote products on Reddit in exchange for money. Then he deletes comments of other users, accusing him of advertising. So higher powers could be a play here. It sucks because moderators are the heart of Reddit. They're the very people who are supposed to enforce the platform's values, but it seems like they're only in it for themselves. Because of this, Reddit has become one of the worst sites to find unbiased information. If you dare discuss anything that a mod doesn't agree with, you know how it ends. If you think that things can't get any worse than Reddit mods, think again. Because there's someone else that might have an even bigger impact on what you can and can't say online. The majority of people on Reddit hates vegans. Eh. And then I noticed that the majority of Reddit seems to hate women. And then I noticed the other day that the majority of Reddit also seems to hate men. I think Reddit just hates everyone. <laughs>
In 2013, Tim Wenninger did an interesting experiment. On Reddit, when someone makes a post, you could either upvote it if you like the post or downvote it if you don't. Tim created a computer program that randomly upvoted or downvoted recent posts. This program ran every day for six months. So what was the conclusion? If he upvoted something initially, the average score would be much higher. If he downvoted something initially, the score would be much lower. The same thing happened in regards to getting on the front page of Reddit. You'll see that if I upvote something, it has a 20% more likely chance of being on the front page of Reddit. And if I downvote something, it has a 12% less likely chance of being on the front page. When people see a high number of upvotes, they're inclined to believe what a post says, but a very downvoted post could stir up hate. Not only could this mob mentality potentially encourage misinformation, but it silences the voices of those with less popular opinions. Censorship is dangerous because people need to make mistakes to grow. When you're hated for everything you say, you won't learn how to think critically. But when you're allowed to make mistakes and also listen to others with opposing opinions, you gain a greater understanding of the world. You learn to not look down on people just because they have different beliefs than you. And we can finally learn to put our differences aside and come together as a society just like Aaron Swartz would have wanted. Do you think we could ever get to that point? I don't know, but I definitely don't think Reddit is gonna be the place where it starts. I saw some advice from a former Redditor. Don't be a Redditor, be a person who uses Reddit. This video might not do anything to stop censorship, but let's never stop trying. Now go make the world a better place. Visual Venture. Make sure you guys subscribe and hit the bell notification so I can update you on all the tons of new documentaries to come this year. Let's change the world together. I love you all. Peace.